Thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast, In Search of Soil. For more great clips and full episodes, check out the links in the description below. For at this point in the episode, I mean, we're talking a lot about inoculant compost, your specific way of making compost. So I want to introduce people to the idea of the type of compost you make. At its core, what are the base principles around the compost that you're using? The, the method that we develop uh, maintains several, four key factors on this. Uh, it's, it's aerobic. It always has oxygen. The way the, the bioreactor is designed with the, the columns up the middle, uh, you're never more than uh, six to 12 inches from ambient air. So it's, it's a completely aerobic process. It's a process that uh, operates at about 70% moisture content. That's, that's critical. It's undisturbed. You never turn it. You don't need to. Uh, as long as it's aerobic, as long as you have the 70% moisture content, the uh, biodegradation process goes forward and it seems to increase in diversity, the microbial diversity of the longer that you let it go. Uh, also, we employ worms in it. So it, it is a vermicompost as well. And the worms, we only put in about 100 worms, the red wigglers, at, uh, just after it gets down past 80 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, so you don't cook them. <laughs> And um, they will, about a hundred of those will populate that pile completely by the time it's done and it'll be full of baby worms. And the, the ending texture is a lot like clay. You know, it's, you can squeeze it between your fingers. Uh, you can squish it into a ball uh, when it's done. And it's, the microbial community is pretty impressive. When I do metagenomics on it, we see about 2,700 species of, of bacteria. We see, uh, probably four to 500 species of fungi. So it's, it's that's another thing that's having it 70% moisture content, having it aerobic, that allows fungi to proliferate. And you end up with a significant number of fungal spores because over that year, you start to consume all the energy resources in that compost. So what does a fungi do when it runs out of food in its environment? It'll sporulate so it can can live when conditions are better. So we see a significant number of spores. And, and that's what we're putting in with the extract is we're seeing uh, spores of fungi and also a lot of bacteria. So it's, it's restoring that community through that, that process. With a clay-like texture at the end of it, I think that's different than a lot of compost you see people buy that looks more like it's like kind of mulchy. It still has identifiable bits of organic matter in it. It, it, it have a different hand feel, more uh, loose, kind of friable. What are the big differences you see in Johnson Sioux bioreactor compost versus traditional compost? If you just drive to the landscape yard near you and they sell compost, what are the differences in those methods? In the well, the, the methodology, they, they're turning that compost several times in the first week. So the fungal community never really gets to develop. And, and every time they turn it, the system reheats up. So you don't go through that phase. In, in this composting method that we use, you're through the thermophilic phase in, uh, or that heating phase within a week and the temperature starts to go down. And it depends on, on what you put into it. Uh, as far as how high the temperature goes, the more nitrogen you put in there, the higher the temperature will go and the longer it will stay. But normally, the heating phase is four to five days. Uh, after that first week, you're pretty much through and the temperature will start going down. And it, this whole system allows that fungal community to dominate. So you don't see that in turned compost because every time they turn it, they destroy all the fungal hyphae. I mean, you can see this within 24 hours after you fill that bioreactor in the method that we use. You can go in and you can start to pull the organic matter that you put in apart, and you can see all these hyphae, uh, both of the, the fungi and the actinomycetes, uh, just completely populated the pile. So, you know, the, the pipes that we put in the middle, I think there's there's six pipes that we put in there. That after 24 hours, you can pull those out. I mean, the hyphae uh, from the actinomycetes and the fungi have completely threaded that pile together. So you have a column once you pull those pipe out that doesn't collapse. Now, as it matures, 
the whole system will start to fold in on itself. You'll end up with something that looks like a very rich, dark chocolate cake at the end. And it, if you grab it and have any moisture in it, you can squeeze it and it, it does just meld together like clay. You know, that's, that's what we're observing in, in the compost process. I think one of the biggest comments I've seen on the one that I built was a lot of people have suggested add this to it, add that to it. They're all nitrogen sources and they're all saying, do this and it'll speed it up. And, and they're missing the point here that the goal isn't fast results. The goal is the right results. And that just takes time. So if you did try to speed this up by adding fish emulsion or whatever to it, what are you trading off? What are you missing? That's a good question. Um, I tried at the beginning on some other, you know, before we developed this by trying to add nitrogen to the system to, to speed it up, it failed. And, and what I see is, you know, a lot of the, the resources I use to make these piles are very low in nitrogen. I mean, you're talking leaves, uh, 50 to 60 to one or higher. And I saw that the benefit of this, allowing the system to fix its own nitrogen with free living nitrogen fixing bacteria, you start to develop those community of microbes that can do that. And I saw there's plenty of nitrogen in the composting process because I see a lot of free living nitrogen fixers. That community develops very strongly in these composts. You know, I've got, got the metagenomic data that I can, I can show you. Well, this group right here, they're free living. And they're, they're a, a major component of the system. So I think the more you can leave it alone and let nature take its course, it's like a good wine or a good cheese or good bread. All of these, you know, it's, it's a system that you kind of let nature do what she's done for millions of years. Uh, and the results seem to show a much better uh, compost. So is this idea that you see a lot out there of, 18 days to finish compost, 30 days to finish compost. Do you think that's doing more harm than good in where you're sure you're adding organic matter to the soil and that will help your soil in the long term, but it's like you're only focusing on half the picture. You're not seeing the whole picture. I think uh, from the research I've seen, if you can allow nature to do it in her time frame. The results are much better. I mean, I, I don't know that they can use theirs at a, a two pound rate and, and see this type of benefit. I know the Haggerty's observed in Australia, they got their compost from one person on, on the east coast of Australia and they're on the west coast. They had it shipped all the way across Australia, which is not a small country. And they thought, well, we'll just use somebody else's compost. And it failed. So I think. You know, that's what we're, we're doing an experiment right now to see how consistent these composts made all across the USA to see uh, how different they are or how similar they are. So that, that will hopefully answer a few of those questions that we have on it. As I say, there's still a lot we don't know, uh, but what we do know is it's, it's beneficial to plant growth. It can be applied for a cost from 25 to 50 cents an acre if you're a large farmer. Uh, it grows great tomatoes just straight. Uh, if you're a regular farmer or uh, just doing a garden at home, you can't go wrong with this, this stuff. It really makes a difference in, in the way plants grow. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out some of the great clips and watch the full interviews right here on In Search of Soil.